This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so the best example for platform as a service in AWS is Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so this Elastic Beanstalk is used for uh, uh, hosting media transcoding application, web application, and uh, all these things. Okay, so we are going to run Elastic Beanstalk. So Elastic Beanstalk is platform as a service concept. Okay, so this is mainly for uh, developers, but still we can also understand how this concept works. Okay, so this is mainly for web application management. So when I say platform as a service, as so as a customer, we are only responsible for creating application and uh, maintaining its code. Okay, or uh, its data. We don't have to manage the OS. We don't have to patch it. We don't have to monitor it. Only we need to create the application and host the data in AWS platform. The remaining uh, deployment, load balancing, uh, capacity provisioning, auto scaling, application health monitoring, all those things will be handled by Amazon. So as a customer, we just need to make sure we have the latest application code or uh, latest uh, services. Okay, so when I talk about uh, programming, so Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, it supports many programming language like Java, .NET. It supports Python, PHP, Node.js. So it supports a lot of different uh, uh, programming language. You can create application code in your favorite language and uh, Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, it will uh, be able to run that particular program so this is on the programming language even on uh, the web services side even you can go and uh, run ias or apache tamcat apache tomcat ias from microsoft so you can uh, run all these things apache http server okay nginx and then puma passenger so you, it, it supports many uh, web services also Okay, the advantage here is, see, we are in, in, in the second class, when we discussed about EC2, we have to go and uh, select the EC2 instance, select the operating system, and we have to deploy it. Then, then, then only we can go and uh, manage the web application. So in this case, we don't have to do any kind of deployment. We don't have to deploy the OS automatically. Uh, on the back end, Amazon will provision the OS and uh, they will uh, give us access. We just have to go and uh, uh, apply or deploy the code i'll show you how to do that and it, it's a pretty straightforward format so once after the developer has developed the code they have to package it the package has to be in either dot zip format or dot war format so either uh, the archive format or the zip format both are compressed format so uh, amazon uh, elastic beanstalk they will take care of the rest after you uh, upload the deployable code okay i'll show you how to do that okay so you can practice uh, in uh, one of the example so you can just go and um, create a web application so the benefit is you don't have to worry about it it is easy to get started okay we are not uh, we, we don't have to have any knowledge on os we don't have to have knowledge on uh, the underlying infrastructure so elastic beanstalk amazon will be taking care of all these things okay capacity provisioning load balancing auto scaling os management deployment uh, security group management all those things they will take care of it so we don't have to manage it it is a fully managed service okay so we just have to take care of uh, the application and its code okay remaining everything security update to the os update to the back end the underlying infrastructure everything will be taken care by them it's complete control on the resourcing by amazon okay when i go and create it now it is asking me an application name instead of ec2 instance name now it is asking me application name you can just go and give any name i can just say uh, precision app one okay now it will ask for uh, which platform you want to run see for example uh, these are the different platform or programming language it is supported in certain cases see for example if i go and select uh, ruby ruby can run on uh, amazon linux only 
okay so only sub supported os is amazon linux whereas if you go and select php php can run on amazon linux and also underlying other os so they are giving support primarily for uh, their operating system or uh, the core operating system if i select java then you can also go and choose uh, which os you want to run it on okay so you can just go and choose uh, the specific uh, programming language which you have developed the code and you can go and select the specific operating system that you want to run so first i mean uh, since it is your first time you can go and run some sample application so that you can uh, understand how the step-by-step uh, -step instruction work and then you can go and upload a sample code uh, later okay so if the development team has created a package or created an application you can ask them to create it in a zip file or bundle them in a zip file and you can upload the code in a dot zip format or dot war format only those two formats are supported or else you can select the sample application now and uh, you have a lot of other options also so if i go to configure more option you will see some more configuration settings where you can go and change uh, the size of the cpu or if you want to change the size of the instance if you want uh, uh, multiple instances or if you want to have uh, a different uh, cost uh, costly tier you can also go and change the instant type okay you can also go and have it as a load balanced highly available instance instead of single instance but if you select these things there are chances you might have to pay for it you can also go and choose on demand instead of i mean instead of on demand you can go and choose spot instance so there are a lot of customization that you can do okay but i'll cancel it for now okay and even um, i don't want to make any other uh, changes for now let's see uh, if, if we are able to deploy it so only single instance is free tier eligible but if you are going for high availability or custom configuration then there are chances you might have to pay for it because uh, you have to create two instances load balancer and other things to achieve a high availability okay you can change the platform option if you want and uh, you can just create it now i'm going to create the application so here if you look at it so uh, you will uh, you'll be able to see how the back end uh, stuff works okay so i uh, will be able to see uh, uh, the underlying things just a second uh, let me reshare my screen this is pretty straightforward see unlike your ec2 instance this needs very less steps okay you can just directly go and um, select the platform that you want to run your application and then um, you can just upload the code or you can use the sample application and just modify uh, based on the requirement okay let me just reshare my screen again see if you look at here it's the environment is still getting created the security group the elastic ip all these things will be auto assigned auto uh, provisioned okay suppose if you want to practice uh, any sample uh, application what you can do is you can just go and download uh, the sample application code for uh, elastic beanstalk okay there will be a lot of application code that are available for uh, testing or sample purpose there are a lot of tutorials or samples available so if you want to yeah if you want to download something see you can just go and download a laravel application or cake php application so you can go and download whatever you want for example if i want to download this sample i can click on this i can just go and uh, download the sample here Okay, they are given the step-by-step -step instruction on how to do that okay they are given the uh, default source bundle you can just download this and then deploy it okay let me um, take this okay you can also do that okay so uh, you have hundreds of uh, sample application which you can play around there are many tutorials on different uh, application and different uh, type php python you have uh, different stuffs so this is for python this is for node.js you have some sample for uh, python and the other uh, sample application also so here let's see if the environment is already created the environment is starting if i go to application okay or environment now it is still pending okay let me refresh okay you can see that you have already got a, a url okay you can just copy this url 
and now you have a python application which is running on amazon linux which is ready to access so let's go and try it okay it should take some time because it's still pending here okay uh, it will take a few couple of minutes to provision and uh, get ready you can check the application you can check the environment both of them okay once it is available we can um, test it out okay let's see if there is any other uh, sample okay let's try this uh, flask application okay it is saying uh, you can just go and download all these things okay anyways this is mainly for the developer but let's see uh, yeah it's okay now uh, the health is saying okay and now i can go and refresh it so within three month three uh, minutes you are able to uh, run a elastic beanstalk python application so you can go and customize whatever you want on that application and uh, customize for your need actually so this is how you can quickly launch a web application on the choice of your uh, uh, programming language and uh, on uh, the operating system that you want see amazon linux is again uh, uh, less cost plus uh, you can also run which version or which platform you want to run on it and if you want to make changes you can also go to the environment and uh, make some smaller minor changes here you can look at the health you can also go and uh, upload newer version after modifying it and you can also go and um, uh, make some minor changes restart the application server you can also rebuild it again so there are very few options that you can go and change so if you go to configurations uh, you will be able to change the software version or you can go able to increase the number of processes thread okay but you don't have to worry about it so the developer will uh, develop the package and they will give you the zip code you just have to upload it and then uh, monitor it when there is some uh, unusual usage or hike or like spike in the usage you can go and increase the capacity or you can go and change the capacity it's pretty straightforward okay you get a lot of uh, options to uh, change it but it is very easy instead of managing the entire ec2 instance you can just manage only the application and its code okay you get a lot of uh, detailed health status and monitoring updates and so on Okay, this is what they call it as uh, uh, Elastic Beanstalk or Platform as a Service, where uh, you just have to only take care of application and its data. The remaining backend infrastructure, the OS, the underlying hardware, it will be managed by uh, Amazon. Okay, you can also practice one of them a little later, but uh, yeah, this is something uh, which you can uh, um, understand. Okay, so let's do one thing. Okay, you can also con see the consumption here and based on the consumption if the utilization is very high you can also go and change uh, the configuration sizing okay based on the utilization okay once after you practice it go and delete the entire environment or else uh, maybe after some time then there will be charges for this i'll terminate the entire environment okay i'll just enter the environment okay this is application as a service or a platform as a service example similarly you can also practice on uh, database as a service so in amazon uh, they have a something called rds which is managed relational database service so if you want to run a database application in aws then you can go for uh, uh, rds 
okay rds is uh, aws database okay you can also go and create a database i mean most of you have might have heard about rds right the relational database service this is nothing but database as a service okay in uh, in general um, in olden days we used to have uh, a separate operating system running for the database we'll ask uh, what kind of os we need and then uh, we'll go and provision it but here this is database as a service okay you don't you don't have to go and uh, install the os you don't have to deploy anything we can just go and ask which flavor or which uh, version of database you need and uh, you will get that okay relational database service okay again this is a platform as a service option but not application but it is a uh, database application okay not a business application so here um, there are a lot of amazon uh, so i mean amazon supports a lot of different uh, relational database engine so if you ask me what are the engines that are supported it supports uh, oracle it supports microsoft sql it supports mysql it supports postgres okay it supports my uh, maria db and then it also supports its own proprietary amazon aurora amazon aurora is the native relational database from uh, uh, amazon so uh, here the advantage is that the virtual machine operating system storage network server the operating the database uh, major version upgrade housekeeping all these things are done by service provider service provider here is aws so aws will take care of the os the virtual machine then storage network the underlying uh, server the db major version upgrade okay and other all housekeeping activities will be done by uh, aws the customer just need to maintain uh, only the database connections and the, the database uh, layer so completely it is a relational database service as a op option in cloud and uh, that too this is oltp right online transaction processing application so let's go and see how we can uh, provision a uh, rds and then manage it okay so let's see uh, how we can do that so if you go here there are option to go and create a database okay here you will get multiple option so in if you are a beginner if you have never created a database before you can go with the easy create option this will give you all the options with best practices standard so aws will suggest the best practices and you don't have to worry about selecting which configuration is best for uh, the database you can go with the easy create option if you are uh, uh, new to uh, databases and amazon okay this will give you option to go and create the creation options with uh, the default option or the with best practices standard create is for uh, people who has got some understanding and they know how to select it or what to select if they need to uh, increase the availability security backup and maintenance so let's go and create the easy create option and then um, let's create the standard create second time so if you look at here there are six different engine that they are providing amazon aurora mysql mariadb postgres oracle and uh, microsoft sql so if you look at here currently if in, uh, in your on-premises data center if you are having your application database running on My mysql then you can choose this amazon aurora with mysql compatibility so the reason most of the people go for this option this is proprietary database from uh, amazon so if there is any issue with the database or if there is any issue with the database engine or schema or whatever you can get direct support from amazon Whereas if you are going with open source MySQL or Postgres, then uh, you have to rely upon the community to uh, support if in case of any bugs or any issues. So it is always preferred to go with uh, the, uh, the service provider's native option. Or else you can also go for Oracle or Microsoft SQL because this is, all, this is also supported by a separate vendor or it is backed by a vendor. Whereas the MySQL and Postgres, they are all community backed uh, product. So you should not go for that. And again, you can go and choose production or uh, test environment so based on the environment of your uh, application you can go and choose it as a production one or a development test one so we'll create it for development test purpose here in the classroom and we can give it a name and you can auto generate the password by default this is the database name that it is going to create so i'll just give precision db01 username admin is fine and i'll make a note of this uh, database name so that uh, later i can okay later i can just uh, 
Sports Admin. Okay, so we can just go and look at the configuration options. So these are the default settings that it is selecting. Okay, that it is fine. Okay, let me create the database. Okay, this is easy create option, but if you want to uh, create uh, the database with standard creation option, then you need to understand which one to choose and uh, what is the advantage of one over another uh, database and so on. So let me show you, let me help you understand a little more about that. See, when I go and create one database, so here I have uh, other options like this. Let me show you. See, if I select uh, MySQL, see the message here. So they will uh, give you more details stating that what kind of options are there, whether you want to go with uh, multi-AC database cluster or multi-AC DB instance or single DB instance. So if you are going for a single database instance, then it is a single point of failure. If it is a multi AC DB instance, then it will be like uh, you'll have high availability so that if one instance goes down, you'll have uh, high availability. Okay, so mostly uh, you have to prefer Amazon Aurora. The reason is they are uh, giving the limitations here. So if I go and open up here, if you are going with MySQL, Amazon is telling you the, uh, the limitations here. What kind of uh, issues are there? So it is saying like uh, you cannot use the you know, DB and there are some limitation in terms of storage or rather sizing okay so if you're going for mysql you have to be understanding that there are some uh, limitation when you're going for mysql whereas all these limitations are already fixed in amazon aurora similarly if you're going for postgres then uh, it is actually having a uh, lot of uh, disadvantages also so always amazon aurora is uh, much cheaper and uh, much better in terms of performance and uh, in, in all of those aspects so you can go with the free tier option here. See if I go with uh, uh, Postgres and MySQL, you get the option for uh, free tier. Okay, but if you are going for Amazon Aurora, you did not get the free tier option. So whenever you are practicing, always choose Postgres or uh, uh, Mar I mean MySQL option because in uh, Amazon Aurora, you got only production and development test option. So let me go and uh, delete this because this is a cluster option. I'll just go and uh, stop it or delete it otherwise uh, it will uh, end up uh, resulting in cost okay so let me okay so let me go to the writer instance first let me delete it i don't want to create a snapshot so this is how you can acknowledge and uh, delete it Okay, let's give it a some minute okay okay it will delete in some time so meanwhile i'll just go and create another postgres uh, database and that is free tier eligible one so here you have to be careful like for postgres default username is postgres not admin okay even you can just go and change it i will just say precision db01 then here the username is postgres okay you can also go and um, change it you can also check whether uh, mysql supports the same okay it also supports free but then see the default uh, username for uh, mysql is admin okay if you are using postgres then it is postgres if you are using the other amazon aurora or mysql the default username is admin so you have to re remember that so i'll just give some password here i'll just use uh, the password so it should be at least uh, eight characters so i'm just giving a user password for that yes is no no okay it is more than eight character okay and it is saying add symbol okay it says it cannot contain any of the following slash single code double code and add the rate symbol so we cannot use the add the rate symbol so i'll just change it
okay i've changed it because it at the rate is not included so you can select the db3 micro and then uh, t3 micro so you can also go and choose the storage option uh, generally you can go for general but if you need high, very high performance you can go and change it to uh, provision iops so if you want to automatically scale the, the storage you can also enable that whenever there is uh, increase in size it will go and increase the storage auto scaling okay, you can also create a ec2 connection if you want to but then uh, if i don't want to do anything i can just leave it okay i'll just leave it i don't want to connect now okay so let me go and password authentication is fine okay let me create it so now after i create the database i'll show you how to connect to that specific database now a cold on this one is getting created it will take uh, at least 5 minutes okay meanwhile what you can do is you can go to your uh, ec2 and uh, try to check okay i think i already have a windows instance right maybe i'll use that i'll prepare the windows server with some uh, client package so you can log in from uh, linux by installing mysql client but this is another option i am showing you okay you can go to google chrome and uh, download uh, mysql workbench for accessing mysql okay mysql work workbench for windows so there are many other tools that are available but uh, mysql workbench is uh, the native tool from uh, mysql okay you can just go and download the msi installer and you can uh, install it okay you can install this one similarly there are other tools that are there uh, okay it needs visual studio 2019 package okay okay i'll download that also
okay let's do one thing um mysql windows client there is another tool called heidi sql okay you can also use that you can either use my my mysql bench or uh, you can also download uh, there are many tools see you can use either of this db or uh, toad or zamp there are many tools but you can also use heidi sql okay this is another uh, good tool actually okay i'll download the heidi sql tool okay i'll save this okay i'll run the application let me install it so this doesn't need any um, dependencies like your uh, mysql okay it will automatically go and install uh, the my uh, heidi sql package so once after the client is installed you can go and get the details of uh, the mysql that you have deployed okay go to the console refresh it let's see if the okay it's created okay, it is currently taking the backup okay and maybe i'll just go here to the db identifier and here i can just go and um, copy the link okay actions okay let's give it a minute it will uh, okay here is the endpoint okay so you can copy this endpoint and then go to the system so here in the my heidi sql I, i'll just launch it and then let will ask me to connect to that particular uh, instance okay here i'm just going to give the heidi sql instance so here uh, the important thing is you need to give the username as admin okay password you can give the password that you have uh, given okay and the port number is 3306 that is the default so let's see this and also we can check the security group if there is any issue so here you have to select maria db or mysql the option on the top so whichever based on the package that you are uh, installing you have to select the same okay it will take a minute let's see uh, let me also go and check the security group sometimes the security group might not allow 3306 okay go to inbound rules so in this inbound rules i have to allow the um, 3306 inbound yeah it is already allowed okay so then that should be okay let's see it's still not allowing let's see let me select the mysql dll precision db1 
okay it says uh, okay let me go and try okay it is asking me to try the default library let me go and try the default library in that case I'll also try to resolve from here if uh, the DNS lookup or NS lookup works. Okay, it is resolving, so it is able to connect to it. Oh, okay, so it has got only private IP. So currently it doesn't have, uh, okay, but either way it should work. Okay, admin. So we are today under three. So we'll have to cross check this. Okay, so three three zero six. Okay, master news name is um, admin. Okay, let's do one thing. Let me go and try to create a EC2 instance here. Okay, we are already having a EC2 instance. This is running on uh, what image? Amazon Linux, okay. Anyways, let us try this, but uh, let's try if it is issue with the database or the connection. We'll find that out. September 2022 PPK. Okay, you see two iPhone user. Okay, let me switch user to root and then I'll uh, just install MySQL. Okay, once after it is installed, let me try it from uh, Linux. Meanwhile, I'll also try it from Windows. Uh, this is precision db01 open login it should not take this much time it should connect quickly okay it says not responding We can also try it from MySQL Workbench if in case this doesn't work. Okay, in this machine it is already installed. Okay, let me try to connect. Okay, let me connect. Ah, okay, it is asking me to go and install MariaDB also. Okay, I'll just install, since this is uh, Amazon Linux, I'll just try to install that also. Okay, this is the command we have to give. Okay, MySQL, I find the host name, followed by username and password. It is very straightforward. 
okay i'll just replace the host name with the endpoint here okay i'll have to copy the endpoint and then enter it here okay i'll have to give the username as admin and uh, you can enter the password later okay let's see okay it is asking for the password let's try to give that okay it has logged in perfect okay now i can just go and uh, um, check for the databases so let me see okay there are a lot of commands mysql iphone iphone version will give you the a lot of commands there okay so now let's go and uh, try out so even they have given some more uh, screenshot also okay mysql workbench okay so this is the tool i said okay so you can also use mysql workbench if you are using in windows it is very easy straightforward okay you have to just give the database name port number username and password okay and here i can just uh, to check the databases inside this i can just say show databases followed by semicolon it will show all the databases in my uh, mysql uh, database okay and also you can go and create new database also if you want to okay this way the this way it is very straightforward it is very easy to manage the database from linux and windows okay even you can go and create a windows server and install the mysql workbench and uh, you can uh, practice it okay let me also show the windows one quickly okay just give me one minute i'll show how to connect it from windows so that you can also practice it this time we will install the mysql workbench instead of third party tool I'll go and launch the instance. Okay, just give me five minutes. We'll complete this. Okay, so that you also can practice uh, RDS. So we have already connected from Linux. Okay, so we just connected from Linux and uh, we are able to look into the database list and uh, we are able to see that, but I'm going to show you the Windows option also.
okay instance is now running okay i'll log into the instance now and then let's see how to uh, install the mysql workbench and connect to rds okay here uh, we have to select the username and password we have to generate it okay it will take at least four minutes for windows to generate the password Okay, we'll try to log into the instance now. Okay, we have installed the windows now. We'll go and install the MySQL workbench. I'm downloading the MySQL workbench for Windows. Okay, so just download. Okay. 
Okay, let's give it one minute. Okay, it is installed now. You can go and start connecting to it. So in order to connect to that, you need to copy the endpoint and the username and password. Only that is enough. Okay, now let's wait for the MySQL workbench. So it will open up the connection dialog. If it doesn't open up, you can just say plus, click on the plus icon here, and you can enter the host name, and you can change the username to admin, and you can just say okay. Okay, it is saying, okay, host name is this. Uh, okay, connection name, I'll just give this. Okay, okay. Okay, it is asking for the password, good. You can also save the password in the vault. Okay, now it is able to create it, open it. Okay, you can just go and check the server status. You can be able to go and uh, check the dashboard. You can go and add additional database. Okay, so you, all these things are uh, available now. Okay, you can go and check the new SQL database tab. Okay, this is how you can graphically manage the database also. So you can also connect to a specific database. Okay, you can see that the precision database is listed here and you can able to uh, open it. Okay, you can also import the data, export the data. If you already have an existing database, you can also import it from the backup. You can also export the backup of the data here and you can play around. Okay, you can also go and show the database here. Okay, you can see the database, the same database list will be available. MySQL, SYS, performance data, the same, the same listing. Okay, whatever you are seeing here, uh, both of them are the same. Okay, you can see the information schema, MySQL performance schema. This is the same thing we see here. You can manage it graphically as well as from the command line. Okay, this is how you can create a database and uh, manage it from both Windows Server and uh, Linux Server. Okay, I'll stop the recording.